Alabama was our, our ability to move defenders off the line of scrimmage. And I get it. Like we have big, strong guys. There's no doubt about it, but they play with good pad level and they understand what I'm trying to do. So I said this before, if you want to hit a guy really hard, you hit him with your shoulder. So this is a gap scheme, double team, the front side of power, front side of counter, whatever you want to call it to a backside linebacker. So the covered player 55 is a settle lift play, settle lift. He's high. It should be top of the shoulder, bottom of the number. The tackle in this play is what I call the lift is the, is the driver. So 55 is the lifter. 74 is the driver. So he's going to near foot lead on a gap scheme. We don't open our hips on a gap scheme because the ball is coming back to us. Near foot lead and get under him. That's pretty good by 74. And we want to take this guy and throw him at the linebacker if we can. Take that defender and throw him at the linebacker. Set a lift, near foot lead, get under him and throw him at the linebacker. That's a pretty good picture. All right, now 70 is a pretty twitchy guy. It's pretty good. Get into it. Left guard's a little high. Okay, if, the, if there's movement or, or sometimes there's movement and sometimes sometimes that defender will do what I call two gapping of the, of the, uh, of the, of the offensive player where he runs down the middle of the guard. If he does that, if he two gaps the guard, anytime the color disappears, we want to snap his hip. So if I'm the right tackle in this picture, in my mind, I'm thinking near foot lead, top of the shoulder, bottom of the number. Near foot lead, top of the shoulder, bottom of the number. But if the color disappears, snap the hip. And that's got to be the reaction. So right there, I'd like to see his right hand try to get that hip. Let me see if we get one here. Here's a head-up defender. So if his guy's head up, the covered guy should take all of them with his eyes inside for gap control. And here comes the guard, shoulder punch. There it is. The hardest way to hit somebody is with your shoulder. So if you want to move them, hit them with your shoulder. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the, to the game clips here because, again, I'd, I'd like to show Okay, so if you want to see a guy get thrown off the line of scrimmage, here's a pretty good look at it. I'm not crazy about the footwork of the right tackle, but I love his pad level, and I love the violence of the strike. So this is just a weak side counterplay. It's all it is. Center on the back block. Okay, so what is a back block? A back block is a reach block to the near number. That's exactly how we coach it. A back block is a reach block to the near number. Just don't cross his midline. And it, with any one-on-one -on -one block, hand pressure where the ball is. So once I fit the block, my hand pressure should be in my right hand. So pretty good double team. Really not going to get a chance to show any film of pulling other than the game film. So... To me, when you pull on this play, you should come flat down the line of scrimmage, pass the center, and then assess the defensive end. So some guys squeeze like this. Some guys are a little bit more up the field. But it's pull right, kick right, non-negotiable kickouts. Okay, so here they played us with, with kind of a, a shade and a four eye. So it's really two, two down blocks here. So let me just say this, like, and we're running out of time a little bit here, but I do want to hit touch on it. There's, when you talk about a down block for an offensive tackle, you've got to really explain to him what the play is. So like on a gap scheme, when you're blocking this four eye at right tackle, when I'm the right tackle, I got to block this guy. My mentality has got to be to stop the penetration and then hand pressure where the ball is. I don't have to put my hat all the way inside. If I put my hat all the way inside, the guy can backdoor the play. So I think like right here, he's on the near number. He's good. He can stop the penetration there because ultimately the ball is going to end up reading it, A gap, B gap, inside hip of the puller, stay on the move. That should be the mentality of the ball carrier. And that ball will end up outside of me eventually, just like it does here. But if you just throw your hat inside like, you're, like it's a cutoff block, you, the guy can kind of slip you, or he can play the B gap with your body and then play the C gap uh, himself. 
and it creates a problem for the play. Not crazy about the kick out. Uh, I like the back block a lot. Guy kind of just gets picked a little bit. Let's get another one here. Okay, so here's one to the left. Okay, here we go. You're deucing a two-eye that slants out to the B-gap. Okay, so now, if I'm the left guard, here's what a left guard should do. As this starts to happen, get vertical, then get out. So don't just drop that guy to the tackle. So as I'm, I'm, I'm blocking down on this two-eye, the tackle's protecting my outside half. He slants out. Get vertical. Really well done by 65. Get vertical. And then get out. Don't just run to the linebacker. Secure the play one level at a time. Get vertical, then get out. Okay, here's an odd front. This is going to be uh, counter to the left. Same thing with the left tackle. Stop the penetration, hand pressure where the ball is. Okay, nose guard goes away, so the guard climbs. And all of these plays for us, we are an A-gap, gap scheme play. It doesn't mean the ball always goes in the A-gap, but it means that's where the blocks are being set up for. And, and as a blocker, you have to block the play for the initial track of the runner. So in this case, we are blocking it for the A-gap. That's why 65 is not trying to seal the linebacker. He's trying to bounce him over the top like this. And ultimately, the ball goes right inside of him. Okay, here's a little, a little change-up gap scheme where we're going to man the front side and now pull for the two linebackers. So, you know, is it a true gap scheme? Do you really have true gap control? You don't. You, so you got to pick and choose kind of what this play doesn't fit every week with the defenses you're going to see. Uh, you'd like to be able to predict a little bit of kind of what the front is going to look like and how much they're going to move. But it is a nice little change-up for the defensive ends that want to spill really – that will give up the line of scrimmage to spill. So this is pretty good. For the right guard, it's a skip pull because he's kicking out a second-level defender now. The tight end is just going to come around and hug his inside hip. And there we go. We've got a pretty good picture. But it's a changeup. Okay, last one here. Okay, left guard lunges, uh, right guard lunges a little bit here on the kick out. Not crazy about that. But again, pretty good by the left tackle. Probably a little short with his target. Hands are outside. He's grabbing a little bit. That's not great. Let's get one more. I don't want to end on that one. Okay, pretty good. Here's the watch. You see the near foot lead by 70. Defender stays inside. Okay, nobody sets the edge of the defense. Right, this is just your traditional two-back power play. That's all it is. Okay, I'm going to end on that one there. Uh, let me just say I, I really appreciate